Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Robert Fedoric. It is so good to have you here. In this episode of ServiceNow Toolbox, we are gonna be describing the concept of many-to-many -many tables and how to build them two different ways. Now, if you already understand why M2M tables exist, you can use the chapters in the description below to skip ahead to the actual build part. If you're new to ServiceNow or new to how data structures work in general, it's really important to know why these kinds of things exist. You may already be familiar with the concept of reference field, where in one table references another table, like which location is this user a part of? where the user has one reference to the location. But there are many other cases where you have table A and table B, and they can have many relationships on either side. A good example of this is users and groups. A user can be a member of multiple groups, but a group can also have many users in it. The way databases handle this relationship is by having a table between the two tables you care about that stores the relationship between them. Like in the case of users and groups, there's a table between those two tables that says, here's a record representing the relationship between a user and a group. We're gonna look at how to build these things two ways and each way will provide unique advantages and consequences. Okay, the first type of many-to-many -many table we're gonna look at is one that I call the middle doesn't matter. And you see this all the time when you're dealing with users and groups. You care about groups that have members, you care about users that have groups, but you don't spend nearly any time looking at the records in that in-between table. Here we are on a user record. Let's go down to the groups that this user is a member of. And we see that they're already a member of the ServiceNow admin group. And let's see what the edit button does on the related list. As you can see, it gives me a slush bucket of other group records. I'm gonna pick architects, move that over, hit save. Now we see that this related list is showing both ServiceNow and architects. I know that there's an in-between record that is joining the user record to the, group rec uh, to the group record. I just don't care about it right now. Now, another thing that's special about this type of M to M table is how the new button behaves on a related list. So I'm looking at groups, I hit new, and it's actually asking me to create a whole new group. Not a relationship to a group, a whole new group. So if I say Robert is a member of the ServiceNow mega admins, and when I hit submit, it creates the group and it creates a membership to that group, the in-between table between users and groups. To build one of these, we gotta go to sys underscore m to m dot list. And this is where we create the special middle doesn't matter type of M to M table. So we're gonna click new and we pick the from table and the to table. My from table is going to be incident. My to table is going to be sys user. It's already created a database name for the table. You'll also see on the right hand side, it's got some names for the references, uh, both database names and labels. It will do a good job of automatically creating these for you, but I wanna add some nuance. So the use case here is maybe we have users that need very special communication given to them. Maybe they speak different languages, maybe they speak in sign language, and we need to have special contacts made for them if they are associated with an incident. So really we want a many to many on the incident where we just have the users. So uh, here we're gonna say, let's call it a major comm incident. And in the label, we're gonna say major comm users. And that's just gonna help us identify the related list in the list of other related lists. So let's create many to many. Now we see our uh, table in here. So we can go to the incident form and see that table in action. So I'm gonna go to incident. Now I've pulled up an incident form so that we can see this many to many in action. So let's right click, configure related lists, and let's grab the major calm users. That's now on a related list. And if we go there and we hit edit, we can see a list of users that we can add to that. So we'll put Abel Tudor, Abraham Lincoln, and Anna Bringle. And they are now related to that incident in a many-to-many -many fashion. Likewise, we could go to Adam Ringle's user record and we could build a related list to the incidents and we can add incidents from there. The next type of many-to-many -many table that we're gonna talk about is one that I call the magic in the middle. And in this case, you're not only joining tables such as user and group with a relationship record, but the relationship record itself has properties of its own that we care about. So we might populate extra information about the relationship or report on that table for various reasons. 
So for this example, I imagined a world where I might wanna have validated action on some type of task type. It's not enough that I put something in the work notes or the, or the uh, additional comments. Maybe I wanna say, I literally did this amount of research. I literally did this amount of assisting a colleague. I took this, that, or the other definitive, validated, defined action. So I really quickly created a table called validated actions. It's not a sexy table, it's just got a name and whether or not the thing is active. And then I populated it with a few records, assisted teammate, emailed client external, visited the client, walked through, escalated, or researched, and those are the validated actions that I can take against an incident. Then I created a conventional table. I called it incident validated actions. And let's take a look at the columns that I've created. So we created a reference to incident and a reference to the validated action table. Then because there's other information I wanna catch, I created a special notes field. And because I wanted to capture how long did I work on this validated action, I created a time logged field. So it's not capturing just a reference to each table, it's capturing other information too. Let's see it in action. So here I am on an incident. So I scroll down to my related lists here. I see that I have an incident validated actions. I see that I've also got an action that I've already taken. And you'll notice that the related list does not have an edit button this time. Uh, because I didn't create it via that sys m to m table. I just created a regular old table. And if I click new on this, unlike the sys m to m method, it's not taking me to the other side saying, hey, create another validated action. This is asking me to create one of the relationship records. So it already knows the incident this is connected to. It's got a number for the action. And all I have to do is pick a validated action. And in this case, I'm going to click walkthrough. And I'm going to say walked through procedure one, two, three. And that took me one hour. And I'm going to submit that. So there's extra information about the relationship that I captured there. And there I have another validated action on my incident because an incident can have as many validated actions as you want. And we're gonna just take a look at one of those validated actions and we can see that the assisted teammate validated action can be linked to many incidents as you see here. So there you have it folks, two ways to build many to many tables and which one you choose depends on the kind of experience you want. Remember my model, if you want to have two relationships where the middle doesn't matter, you just wanna be able to add a bunch of them to a record at once, then you'll use the sys underscore m to m table in order to add those. One thing that I should have mentioned during the build is that those suckers are actually really hard to delete. So when you go to build something in the sys m to m table, uh, be really super sure it's the way you wanna build it. If you want the other experience whereby the table in the middle has properties of its own that you wanna track, and anytime you click new from the related list, you wanna create one of those relationship records, then you want to just take a regular old table and make sure it's got a reference to each of the two tables you wanna relate in a many to many fashion. Thanks again for watching. If you think this was useful, give it a share through your network. I'd really appreciate it. And we will see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1,500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the email picture here.